One way that you can increase the performance in your PC is by upgrading the CPU. Now, for those of you that have never attempted this, it might seem scary to start modifying components that you spent thousands of dollars on. I'm here to tell you that it's not as hard as you might think. But the question is, is it worth the upgrade? Let's find out. Hey, what's going on YouTube? I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. If you're new and you haven't tuned in on any of these videos yet, I actually built this PC as part of like an upgrade series. I've already upgraded things like the cooling for the CPU and the GPU. Today, I'm gonna be upgrading my CPU, which is a Ryzen 5 3600, up to a Ryzen 9 3950X. If you stick with the same family of CPU like I'm doing, this is the Ryzen 3000 series processors, you can usually pick one up on the secondhand market for much less than you would pay new. Prices are kind of all over the place right now, but in a normal standard market, that's what would happen. So I actually picked up this 3950X for 400 bucks and they retail for over $700 uh, USD. Now the performance increase that you get by upgrading your CPU is actually quite nice, but it's nothing compared to a GPU upgrade when it comes to gaming. So just keep that in mind. First thing I wanna instruct you on is actually how to accomplish this. Now, this is an entirely encompassing how-to video, so I'm gonna talk about Intel and AMD. If you have any questions of either one, this video will answer that. Very first thing you wanna do is turn off your power supply and unplug the power connector. You don't want any power going into the computer while you're trying to modify components because maybe it'll turn on when you don't want it to. I like to lay the PC on its side to begin with, because, I mean, why not let gravity do the work for you? It's a lot harder to work with it standing up like this than it is laying it down. Let's talk about the Intel side first and then I'll jump over the AMD side. For the Intel CPU cooler, the first thing you need to do is unplug your four pin header from your CPU fan header on the motherboard. They're almost always located at the top of the motherboard. Some are kind of to the side, but it's a four pin connector and you can just follow the wire going from your CPU cooler all the way up to the connector. Just pull on it, from the base of the connector and it should pop off. If you need to use a little bit of force, that's fine too. Once you get that disconnected, uh, I wanna actually explain the two types of coolers you might run into with Intel. If you have a stock bare bones computer, uh, this is what your CPU cooler is gonna look like from Intel. If you bought a pre-built like an HP or a Dell or anything, this is the cooler. It's got these push pin style design uh, pieces and they just shove into these four holes that are on the motherboard here. All you have to do to remove this is turn it a quarter turn counterclockwise on each connector, and then you can lift up with your fingers on each pin. You can use a flathead screwdriver or some kind of a coin or something to actually turn these. I, I use my fingers most of the time, but sometimes they're pretty tight. Once you turn all four of those and you lift up on those pins, you can just lift the cooler right off. If you have to twist it a little bit to kind of get it to release, that'll work. Now your thermal paste, depending on how long it's been there, might be kind of cooked on your CPU cooler, so you may have to kind of pry to pop it off. Don't worry about that, it's perfectly normal. The air coolers or liquid coolers that you get with Intel are gonna have thumb screws. If you bought a CyberPower, iBuyPower, NZXT, any kind of those pre-built PCs that are gaming PCs, they're gonna have some kind of aftermarket cooler design on here, most likely. So you're gonna have four thumb screws that you'll have to loosen to release the cooler. In an air cooler instance, I'm gonna recommend the same thing, just unplugging it and taking the whole thing off. In a liquid cooler aspect, uh, I, didn't do, I don't do anything with those when I'm upgrading them. I just undo the thumb screws, lift the cooler off, and kind of move it out of the way. Because you've got power cables, you've got RGB cables, you've got data cables going to USB. Usually it's kind of a pain, so just kind of move it out of the way. It's not gonna hurt anything, and as long as you have the cable slack, you can do that. Once you get your cooler off or out of the way, you're just gonna flip it over and you're gonna clean off the thermal paste that's on there. I use these alcohol prep pad wipes. I actually got them at Walmart. You can probably pick them up at any kind of uh, Walgreens or CVS types of thing. It's just isopropyl alcohol already attached to a pad and that way they're kind of one-time use. You just tear it off and uh, wipe your thermal paste and then toss it in the trash can. I find them really helpful. If you don't have access to something like that, Regular isopropyl rubbing alcohol and paper towels work just fine. But you'd be amazed at how many people just try to use a rag or a paper towel by itself and that thermal paste doesn't go anywhere. Once you clean off the CPU and the CPU cooler, you're good to go for removal of your CPU. 
Now, Intel uses a pin on motherboard socket type. It's called Land Grid Array or LGA. You're talking about the pins on the motherboard itself, not on the CPU. So you don't have to worry as much with bending pins on the CPU, you have to worry about damaging them on the motherboard, which I guess it's really bad either way. To get the CPU out of the motherboard, all you're gonna do is push down on the little control arm. It's gonna wanna swing naturally to the right, so just help it out of there. It's gonna pop up on its own. Keep force on it so it doesn't just spring open on you. It's pretty tight. Then you're gonna lift up on this arm and it's gonna naturally start to lift the actual door itself. You'll flip the door all the way up. Most Intel motherboards I've seen, the door just flips vertical like that. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything that flips another direction besides like pre-built. Anyway, once you get that open, you're gonna pinch the sides of your CPU and you're just gonna lift it up like so. Try not to touch the CPU itself on the underneath side. No, you're not gonna bend any pins or anything like that, but you don't wanna get any kind of debris or finger goop or anything on the CPU. It's just gonna cause you problems and you're gonna have to clean that off later. Now, if you get anything on it by accident, you can clean it with isopropyl alcohol, just like everything else. Please take care not to touch the pins on the socket side on the motherboard. If you damage those, you will not be able to use your CPU. It's, this is the cautious part of the actual install. You'll discard your old CPU. You can sell it, do whatever, get your new one. You're actually gonna line up these little cutouts on the CPU with the motherboard portion. You can see where the actual cutouts are. Sorry if the video is not that great to show you. I don't have a super macro lens that I could show that kind of thing but you're just gonna insert it the opposite of removal. You're gonna line up those little grooves and just drop the CPU onto the socket. Once you do that, everything's opposite of removal. You're just gonna flip your door down, let it kind of slide into this groove right here underneath the, uh, the screw. Those two fingers will actually engage that screw. And then you're gonna push down on the control arm, let it swing around and lock in just like you removed it. Then you're gonna apply your new thermal paste. There's tons of ways that people like to apply thermal paste. Some people put a big dot in the middle. Some people do an X pattern, a star, whatever you wanna do. Just don't overdo it and don't underdo it. It's kind of a delicate process. When I'm showing friends how to do it, I like to recommend the spread method because you're creating a thin layer already. And then when you smash it down, it doesn't go everywhere. So it's totally up to you how you wanna do it. There's really no right or wrong way. Just don't overdo it and don't underdo it. AMD CPUs are designed under a pin grid array. It's the opposite of Intel. Now, when you're removing these, that means the pins are on the CPU themselves. Most people damage AMD CPUs when they're trying to reinstall them. Actually, it happens a lot. A lot of times when people damage their CPUs on AMD, it's when they're trying to reinstall the CPU because they set it down and they kind of smash it in and then that breaks a pin. There's two types of OEM mounts for AMD. You have the retention clip style, which is this cooler right here. This is the AMD Wraith Prism cooler. It's got these metal clips on both sides that lock into AMD stock mounting brackets. You can see here how it works. It actually hooks in underneath both these things. You can just swing it down on top of that. I'm kind of doing this backwards compared to what I did the Intel, but you're gonna swing it down like that and you're gonna flip this bar and it will actually lock it down onto the CPU. The, re the removal is the exact same way. You're gonna flip the bar first, pull out on this clip and you can lift up and then just lift the whole thing off of the bracket. That's the retention frame design. Now for Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 processors, you're gonna have this style cooler. This is the Wraith Spire. They also have the Wraith Stealth, which is the shorter version of this. They look the same though. They have a screw, a retention screw and spring type clip. They won't use the stock mounting brackets here. These brackets will actually be removed and all you'll see is the back plate on this. When you start working on your computer here, you're just gonna see your cooler on top. You're gonna unscrew these four screws. Now they will make some noise, some like creaking noise and stuff. That's perfectly normal. It's just the retention springs letting go of tension on the CPU. Once you remove those four screws completely, you'll be able to lift your cooler off AMD CPUs and coolers are notorious, especially these Wraith coolers, for sticking the CPU to the cooler. I've seen so many people do it. You just lift up on it and the whole CPU comes out with it. That's another way that people damage these things. A way to get around that is just twist your CPU cooler. You really have to, to kind of wrench on it to get it to let that CPU paste go, and then you can pop it off of there. 
You're not gonna hurt the CPU or anything. It's not gonna twist those pins. That thing is seated quite nicely. So you can turn it and pop it and then lift your CPU cooler right off. Another way to get around it is by running the computer right before you decide to do your modifications, you know, playing a game or something like that. And then the CPU heated up the thermal paste on its own and you'll be able to just lift it off. Pro tip. Again, AMD is just like Intel. You're gonna wipe off the thermal paste on the CPU and the cooler. And then for the CPU itself to remove it, you just pull out on this tension bar and then lift up. You'll push it all the way up vertical and you'll actually see the socket shift back and forth. That's disengaging the pins on the CPU. Then you're gonna do it just like Intel. You're gonna grab the sides of it and you're gonna lift straight up on this thing. If you flip it over, you can see all your pins are sticking out on the CPU itself. And you can see down into the little holes where the socket makes connection with the pin. Just be careful not to bend these pins like I said. When you're installing the new CPU, all you're gonna do is try to line that gold triangle up. It's got a tiny triangle on the top side, but you can really see it on the bottom side here where it's at. And your words, for the most part, the Ryzen words, are gonna face the back of the motherboard, the, uh, the IO shield portion. When you drop it down, you're just gonna lower it onto the pin connection and it should just drop down onto it. You'll see it sit flush on the actual socket itself. Do not try to force that down or anything. You just wanna drop it on. If it doesn't line up properly, kind of shift your CPU back and forth until it drops down onto there. It should require no force whatsoever. Once it's down, you just push your tension bar down and it'll lock itself in. Now you'll put your CPU thermal paste on, just like I said for the Intel one. If you didn't watch that portion of the video, just go back and watch it real quick. But once you do that, you install your cooler, the exact opposite of removal, and you're all set. Now for my upgrade PC here, I use the Corsair H115i Performance uh, RGB cooler. It has a totally different mounting system than actually both of these. It has its own little clip retention system that hooks onto the AMD one. So I guess it's kind of like a hybrid system because it uses those lock-ins, but it's not a flip bar or anything. You can see here, I don't unplug everything. I just loosen these two torsion screws. It's gonna let go. If you loosen them too much, it's gonna fall out because it actually bolts into itself. But you'll loosen it enough that you can swing those two clips off and then you're just gonna lift your CPU cooler there. I'm using a thermal pad, not thermal paste, just for making it easier to clean things up for myself. There's really no difference in performance. And if you're interested in these types of things, I'll leave a link down in the description. You can pick one up for yourself. It's a lot easier than doing thermal paste and making a mess. But enough about the actual how-to portion of it. Let's talk about performance, because I know that's what you're all here for. By upgrading your CPU, it doesn't matter if it's one jump up or four jumps up, you will increase your performance in everything from daily usage to workstation performance all the way to gaming. Yes, you heard me right, gaming. Now in my instance, going from a six core 12 thread chip all the way up to a 16 core 32 thread chip, I saw a great performance increase in everything that I did with it. I like to run multiple programs at once like uh, browser windows, Discord, OBS Streamlabs to be able to capture my gameplay, and then of course gaming on top of that. So when you're talking about doing so many tasks at once like that, a multi-core CPU is the way to go. Let's talk about some of my performance numbers. This is strictly on gaming. I didn't do any workstation performance testing or anything like that. I just did gaming. This has 16 gigs of RAM, the Corsair H115i Pro, an RM850X power supply, and uh, I put in a 2080 Ti on this computer. I did have a 3060 in it, if you watched my last couple videos but I wanted to bump up the performance a little bit to really show uh, how the CPU upgrade would, would differentiate. In control, I got 113.4 FPS, and with the 3950X, I got 118.1 FPS. In Apex Legends, with the 3600, I got 182 FPS, and with the 3950X, I got 200.4. And then in Call of Duty Warzone, I went from 111.4 up to 113.5, and in Forza Horizon 4, I went from 170 up to 183. Now you may not see those performance numbers depending on what CPU you upgrade, but if you're looking for an upgrade uh, for a CPU, you're gonna see the biggest performance difference when you're going from non-hyper-threaded CPUs to hyper-threaded. If you have an old CPU that's a four core with no hyper-threading and you upgrade to a six core 12 thread, not only are you increasing your core count, but you're also giving your CPU hyper-threading, 
which in the long run is gonna let you run so many more things multitasking than it will if you just run that four core CPU. So what can I give you for the takeaways of all this? If you just skip to the end of the video, here's the most important part. When you're thinking about upgrading your CPU, make sure you need the increase. If you've got a newer generation CPU, like a Ryzen 5 5600X, and you're thinking about upgrading to a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, you might not see the increased performance in gaming or everyday use because those cores are not really utilized yet in such a wide scale. But if you're doing workstation performance, you know, video editing or, or something really intense, then you might see the increase in performance as far as the multi-core CPU. But if you're going from an old CPU to a new CPU with very low core counts to very high core counts, you're gonna see a astronomical difference, even with the same GPU like a 2080 Ti. Something else to keep in mind though is the value of the CPU. If you pop in a $400 CPU and expect much bigger gaming performance, I mean, look at mine. I went from a 3600 to a 3950X and I only got five to 10 FPS better in some of these games. Some of the games I only got two FPS better. My money would have been spent better elsewhere buying a better GPU if I was looking for increased performance just for gaming. But this is important. My recommendation for CPUs, if you're looking to buy something, I recommend an eight core 16 thread CPU for everyone. If you can afford it, if it's in your budget, look for that. Something like an i7 10700K or 11700K on the Intel side, and then something like a Ryzen 7 5800X or a Ryzen 7 3700X even, they will be great CPUs for years to come. A high core count CPU like an eight core 16 thread chip is gonna allow you plenty of room for gaming performance increases in the future, plus it's gonna give you all of that multi-core usage in everyday taskings, like running Discord and running OBS and playing a game and browsing the internet and watching YouTube all at the same time. Now, don't forget though, if you didn't already know, both of these companies, AMD and Intel, have new CPUs right around the corner. But if you wanna find out first, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on that bell so you'll get notified when the next videos go live. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.